All right, so bone development. Remember that root word osteo or os or is a Latin term meaning bone. So whenever you see that, you think bone. Now osteogenesis, remember that also root word gen? That means you're generating something. You're giving birth to new stuff. So what we have here, osteogenesis is the generation and formation of new bone. Now ossification, so what does that mean? So ification, so like when you have someone who's like, Identification, you're in the process of identifying something. If you have indemnification, you're in the process of indemnifying something. So ification is almost like you're saying in the process of becoming something. So with ossification, if os means bone, that means it's becoming bone. So you're converting something or forming bone or converting something into bone. Now, what do we have here? We have fossilization. So just like fossil, and don't worry, this is like more earth science and biology. Don't worry, this won't be on the exam. But remember, fossilization is how a once living organism eventually becomes petrified, mineralized, and eventually becomes a fossil. So then with bone formation, you have calcification. This is when a tissue becomes calcified. And bone, yeah, classic example, but other tissues can be calcified as well. Like it, what can also be calcified? Things like blood vessels. They can become calcified, and that actually that's more of a fill one for two topic. Or there was a really cool SciShow video saying that, I guess river otters, even their heart tissue, they have heart bones. We don't have heart bones. That's pathological in humans. But they can, their heart tissue can actually become calcified as well. So calcification is related, but not the same thing as ossification. So again, just like fossilization is when something becomes fossilized, ossification is when something becomes bone. Now there are two main types in human. We have endochondral ossification and hey, let's ask the chat, what does chondral refer to? C-H-O-N-D-R. And either O or A. So what does chondral mean? It looks like most of you get it correct. Yes, chondro starts with the same thing as cartilage. Again, osteo, bone is osseo, uh, osseous, os, osteo. Chondro is cartilage. Great. I'm glad a lot of you are on bone or on board. <laughs> but okay, bad joke. All right, so then you have intramembranous ossification. So you kind of know what membrane is, right? It's like in general, a membrane is a flat sheet of something. Now, intra means within, so it's within some membrane, but what do they have? They have something becoming bone in both of these. Now, let's talk about intramembranous or dermal ossification. Hey, we know what dermis is, right? So, intramembranous ossification, this occurs during fetal development. So, this produces something called dermal bones. So, again, don't get confused with, like, your dermis, dermis in when you're fully developed. But it's talking about, okay, remember, the dermis is all connective tissue, right? So what's happening is that you have a membrane of, you have a membrane, and this membrane is starting to become ossified and become bone. So most of the flat bones in your skull and face, these were developed during the fetal development at via intramembranous ossification, and things like your mandible. And again, we will cover skeletal anatomy really soon, but mandible, aka your jawbone, your lower jawbone, and then clavicle, a.k.a. your collarbones. So clavicle is a, the anatomical term for that. But no cartilage is required. So again, this is occurring in the womb. This is occurring, occurring during fetal development. So here's a video. I'll post a link, but let's just watch this real quick. Okay, that, don't worry. That'll be up. At, but I think it does a good job of summarizing what intramembranous ossification, the two, two of the main features. One, it occurs in the womb. It occurs in the fetal development. And two, it doesn't really involve cartilage. It involves those membranes, right? So, oop, okay, skip, skip, skip. All right, now take a little step back and let's talk about what bone is. So remember we talked about bone matrix last lecture? So what is bone? Well, we know that, again, with the bone is a connective tissue, therefore it has protein fibers and it has some sort of ground substance. And what's the main protein fiber in bone? Collagen. So as you can see, roughly a third. Now, again, whenever I show a pie chart or something like this, do I want you to memorize exact percentages? Not unless I say explicitly, I want you to know this number. I don't want you to memorize these numbers. So don't worry about that. I mean, you can memorize them if you really like that stuff, but 
Well, I'm g I think the main points here, well, again, you have a lot of collagen there, but it's not the majority of bone matrix. So you have inorganic components that are not, co again, collagen and the other organic compounds. So calcium, as you can see, calcium is a big comp, is like not the majority, but pretty much the plurality of the composition of bone, much more than the organic compounds. And phosphate as well makes up a big chunk of what the bone matrix is as well. And there's also carbonate, and we didn't get to carbonate really in the chemistry part, but calcium and phosphate you definitely should know. And again, don't get hung up on the numbers. But what do we have here? Again, bone has pretty much the vast majority of your body's calcium and your body's phosphate. So the thing about bone is not only is it strong, but it's also a big reservoir and bank of these, sort of these ions and minerals. So that's why bone mineral is very important. And you also have other things as well, again, compared to the rest, their trace amounts. But again, calcium, collagen, phosphate, carbonate, major components of your bone matrix. Now, intramembranous ossification, what we saw in the video. So here we have those mes mesenchymal cells. And it was briefly mentioned in that video. But again, it starts off as these membranous, soft, connective tissues. But what happens is that... You have all these osteoblasts, and remember, osteoblasts build bone, right? So osteoblasts are building new bone, and as they build new bone, they start to get these little regions of bone, start growing bigger and bigger, and eventually they start fusing. And remember, why do you need blood vessels? Well, here's the thing. When you have all that bone mineral, where do they get the minerals from? Where do they get the calcium? Where do they get the phosphate? Where do they get the carbonate? Well, they have to get from somewhere in the body, and this is why you need blood vessels to supply those ions and minerals that you need to form bone matrix, and also the nutrients you need, the, the osteoblasts need to build new collagen and all the fibers as well. So yeah, blood vessels are supply lines. They're supplying the raw ingredients that osteoblasts need to build mo new bone matrix. And as you have more bone matrix, what happens? So yeah, so as you build more bone matrix, it starts getting denser, and you form that solid flat bones. And again, I know that's the kind of funny thing. Why do they call it flat bones when your skull is kind of like actually kind of roundish and has all these curves? Well, I mean, it's like, I think it becomes from like how it's actually, so flat bones come from intramembranous ossification. So they're more referring to like how a membrane is a flat sheet. Let's see. All right, so here's where you have like intramembranous versus endochondral. I have to, had to get this from the internet. So the, this is a cool thing. The parts in purple here, you have the, this is where you have intramembranous ossification. And remember that this occurs in the fetus. This occurs in the baby. So what happens here? Well, this is actually a really good image. It tells you that the skull needs to ossify fast. When you have a developing baby and fetus, well, what, you, what, has hap what else is contained within the skull? The brain. So you want to protect that brain as soon as possible. But in most pregnancy or most pregnancies and deliveries, like again, which way does the baby come out? Unless it's a breech baby with that feet first, usually the head comes out first, right? So it makes sense to kind of protect this part with the squishy brain and the developing brain that's very valuable and very you want to protect it at all costs. But why don't you have fully developed bones everywhere? Well, is it easier to just pass this bony region, or is it easier if you have all of this calcified and ossified? So again, like you, this part is also big. This is why this image is really cool. It tells you kids bear enough bounce, not break. So if all of this was calcified and ossified, well, what would happen? Well, you, the woman would have to pass all of this versus just this as well. Okay, so then endochondral, so we have intramembranous, again, most of the bones in the skull, especially the flat bones, and then you also have your collarbones, the clavicles as well. Right, so next slide. So now let's talk about endochondral ossification. So uh, I'm glad a lot of you got it correct. Chondro means cartilage, but endo. So endo, remember, just like endo, like, what is it, endoderm or things like um, epi, endo, like epigastric, endogastric, yeah. So the thing is that endo or exocrine, endocrine, so endo means inside, so inner within. 
but chondro means cartilage. So you might not know the term endochondral ossification yet, but if you know these three root words, endo inside, chondro cartilage, os meaning bone. So basically, when you have endochondral ossification, and remember that ification roughly means the process of becoming something, it basically means inside cartilage, you're forming bone. So the, what's happening in endochondral ossification? You're replacing hyaline cartilage with bone. So this is the whole, it's a fancy term for just that. But again, if you know those root words, you can kind of figure it out. So this is why I make a big deal about these medical terms that have a lot of root words. So most bones start as hyaline cartilage, as we saw in that previous slide. Again, the, and if it's not intramembranous, it's endochondral ossification. Now, what happens during endochondral ossification? Well, again, remember, it starts off, endochondral means inside cartilage. So pretty much all those bones that weren't in the skull and the clavicles, they start off as hyaline cartilage in the developing fetus. So they're not, they don't start off as bone from the start. So hyaline cartilage is kind of like the foundation or the scaffold that you eventually form bone within this cartilage. So what happens is that as you have here with the light blue cartilage, you see uh, what we have, a you have blood vessels actually slightly penetrating the cartilage and supplying the minerals to actually calcify and form bone matrix out of that. And then what we have here is now not only is it on the outside, but now you have blood vessels penetrating toward the inside of that cartilage. So now you have bone formation not only on the outer surface around the diameter of this, this cartilage, but you also have bone forming on the inside. And eventually you form this something called the medullary cavity. And whenever you see this term medulla, M-E-D-U-L-L-A, that usually refers to the center of something whenever you have something with anatomy. A medulla is on the inside, the cortex is on the outside. And then what we have here is that now you see that more places, you have more blood vessels penetrating the cartilage and forming more bone. Remember, those blood vessels are carrying all that calcium, the phosphate, the carbonate. And as you have all these minerals coming in and ions coming in, then these osteoblasts can use those minerals and also the nutrients carried by blood to form new collagen. And then eventually you have, like, now it's starting to look more like a bone. So again, now you have all this bone here. And this is, your, and eventually you have a fully formed bone. And now this is actually adult bone. There's no more cartilage here in this bone except for the very ends. Now, endochondral ossification, this is a video. And actually, I don't really need to play the video. I can, you can, because I, I can't really upload it. I have to cut it out anyway. But endochondral ossification, again, Start off with cartilage, you have the blood vessels poking different parts of the cartilage, carrying all the salts, or all the minerals, all the nutrients you need to make new collagen and matrix. And the osteoblasts use those supply lines by those blood vessels to create new bone matrix. And actually, I think this is like, so one of my favorite things to do is do a drawing exercise. So if you have like, um, like a piece of paper or pens, I'll give you a little time to get your papers and pens and draw something as well. And I have to get my iPad set up so I can use it as a whiteboard. And test results will be out. So some people are still taking the makeup exams, but let's see, I think people, no one's taking it on Friday. So if no one takes it on Friday, then it should be out by Friday. Okay, moving on. Okay, so remember, let's talk about endochondral ossification. So endo meaning inside. And then chondro meaning cartilage. Then ossification. So remember, ossif means bone. So inside cartilage, you become bone. All right, so <laughs> all right, so what we have here is that you start off with hyaline cartilage. So here we have like a, let's just say, 
It's like a finger bone. So we had start off with this cartilage right here. So here I'm drawing light blue as cartilage. Now, initially, you have cartilage like this. But in the first step, what do we see? Yeah, we're here to, here to learn, all right? <laughs> Please concentrate. OK, so you have blood vessels. And what they initially do is carry all of this blood. So what does blood contain? Contains many things. But when we're talking about endochondral ossification, you're carrying things like calcium, nutrients, and also phosphate as well. And also oxygen that you need to keep cells alive. Again, you have all, of the, all these osteoblasts living in there. So first you form something called a bone collar. And this is on the outside along the middle width of this. So this is actually a cross section of the bone. So what you would actually see, if, you had, if it was 3D, you'd see something more like this. So that's what we have there. So a bone collar. So that's what we have there. But what happens eventually? Well, then you have blood vessels not only on the outside and periphery of the, the um, developing bone, but they start to actually go toward the inside. So now you have blood vessels toward the inside. And then, remember, they're carrying all of those calcium, all of those nutrients for all the osteoblasts. 